guys, how's it going? Welcome to the BMW M240i. So I've got this car for a couple of days. BMW VIP gave it to me. I know uh, a number of other channels and people have been trying to get them and the BMW press cars, as I've touched on before, are not available till now the end of September for some very strange reason. But I'm not complaining because I've got this bad boy and uh, yeah, it's, it's gonna be a good couple of days. So this M240 has exactly the same engine under the bonnet as the M140 that I drove a few days ago. So it's that fantastic straight six, three litre twin scroll turbo. Same layout principle idea as the original N55 that was in my M135 and the M235s, etc. But they've just improved the internals, they've improved many things, gives it better efficiency more power and around 10% more torque which is the real big factor between the engines. The top end doesn't feel much quicker but that's not a bad thing because the N55 was so good up there in the rev range but it's the mid-range punch that really sort of improves in this particular engine. So yeah you feel that in this car it's just brilliant really really good. Now I've been driving this around most of the morning so I'm getting a good feel for it. Now one thing I have noticed with, with this M240 is that the actual ride and the way it goes about its, its stuff is it doesn't do it in a better way to the M140. Whereas before, even though I'm a 1 Series or M135 fan over the M235, mostly because of practicality reasons, but I was always the first one to put my hand up and say that the 235 had a better ride. It was a more sorted chassis. It was not only more comfortable, more pliant, sort of plush ride, but it also managed to put its power down slightly better and, and, and deal with being under pressure a bit better, as in like being pushed. But jumping from the 140 the other day, which I definitely noticed a vast improvement over, and I've been reading now in forums and comments on my videos that the M140 has actually got the rear end of, the, of, this, of this car. I don't know if that's possible or what, I don't know the ins and outs and I don't, I can't find out technically if that's true but it certainly feels like it to me and jumping into this uh, 240, it doesn't feel like an improvement in terms of ride or anything, like it feels to me identical. So suddenly that gap that the, the 240 had over the 140, the one improvement, the area of improvement that it had has gone in my opinion. Yes, you still get the really nice coupe looks in this, and it does look undoubtedly more like a sports car than, than the One Series. But again, that's why I like the One Series, that's why I've always liked it, because it is a look, it's more subtle, and also you've got that very practical hatchback shape, which allows you to use the car for more than, than just to get from A to B. Before, you could instantly tell the difference between a 135 and a 235, but I certainly can't tell the difference between it. Uh, 140 and 240 but otherwise I mean this car is just brilliant you know it's um it's fantastic you know it it does every, I'm, I'm, I'm getting more and more used to this engine the way it deploys its power and, and its torque it's it's a very interesting engine it, it loves being in if you've got it in drive which I'm in at the moment and in in comfort it just goes about its business very well, very quietly, with no fuss, plenty of torque, doesn't need to downshift, you know, and the gearbox reads all your throttle inputs very well. It, it won't unnecessarily jump down a couple of gears unless it needs to. It uses the torque, so they've recalibrated that 100%. The, the, you know, the calibration on the gearbox is fantastic. I mean, most of the time on these autos, I would use manual when I'm doing some spirited driving for sure I'd put it into the manual mode and use the paddles but when you're commuting in the car you know if you're tired or whatever it is nice and that's the idea of an automatic it is nice just to whack it in drive and, and let it do its business and if you want it to be a bit more aggressive in the in the shifting then you just put it into sports or sports plus and and it and it deals with that you know it improves its shift times a bit quicker and it and it holds onto gears a bit longer so it can do everything the zf8 speed can do everything and it always has been able to do everything it's just a it's a brilliant gearbox and that's you know that's why so many manufacturers 
use that gearbox and you can't believe that it's not a twin clutch jumping out of my M2 which is a twin clutch one of the latest with the greatest software that BMW have made and offer and trust me it's a fantastic box but this ZF 8 speed compares with it I reckon in, in every respect and is a much better automatic box it doesn't quite give you the sportiness that the DCT does when you're really pushing in the thumps that you know that you get on upshifts and I wish that they kind of engineered a bit of that into this eight speed for when you're really pushing on so that it just gives you a bit more rawness back and I think that's why I originally went from my fantastic auto M135 that's why I went to a manual because I just found that the automatic gearbox just did things too well and that certainly hasn't changed with the latest software and updates on this one it still does it extremely well if not better but this engine has got a bit more character about it The 240i is going back in the next couple of hours, unfortunately. As you probably all know by now, I pitched it up against my M2 yesterday with my good friend Ben, and that was very interesting. It highlights each car's strong points, and it also highlights each car's weak points, if you could call them weak points. I don't think you really could, because to be fair, I don't think the M240 or the M2 have really got many weak points, if I'm being honest. But this car, well, what can I say about it? The 240i is definitely improved upon the 235i, but not by a huge difference. I don't want anyone out there running out and selling their 235s or trading them in to buy a 240 because, in my opinion, there's not a massive difference between the cars. There's a couple of technology upgrades in here. You know, I think the latest nav is not as intuitive as the older system. But saying that, it's got more functions, it's got more tech, the, the live traffic, etc. is probably more accurate. And I haven't had enough time in the car to really acclimatize myself with all the latest systems. And I'm sure two weeks, three weeks down the line, I would get used to it all very well. But I do worry about, without sounding ageist, or, you know, even, even people in, in my age group, but I do worry about sort of older people trying to get to grips with the latest iDrive system because to me it's very confusing there's just too many menus and sub menus and this menus and that menus and I've tried going through it a few times and I've kind of given up with a few things like even getting the sports displays on there before it was like I think it was two clicks through now it's about four and you know it's it's a bit of a headache they've over complicated it in my opinion where the iDrive's always been probably one of the more simplified systems on the market the new one in this car although it's got more functions and I'm sure it's better to use you know the the nav and stuff seems very quick and very sharp but it's it is quite tricky to use so there's there's that that I guess you'd call as an upgrade or an advantage there's also the brilliant b58 engine now I said the b58 engine was extremely fast when I tried Josh's m140 and I'm not going back on that and in fact, we did some runs against the M2 yesterday, which you'll see in my M2 video. I'm not gonna spoil it on this, but my theory was pretty much bang on. And it was a combination of that brilliant B58 engine and obviously the, the, the slickness of this eight-speed ZF box, which kind of proved to me and proved to us that it's almost as quick, if not quicker, than, than, the, than the DCT and the M2, which, it's very hard to believe and understand. I'm sure the shift times aren't quite as quick, but it's just the smoothness in which it does it. it you know, there's there's less excitement because there's no jerkiness, but it's just the way it smashes through the gears with without any fuss and with and just relentlessly. When I was sitting in the M2 yesterday and we we're doing side by side runs, and I was watching this, there was just no pauses. You couldn't tell where it's changing gear at all. It was just go go go. And that's what gives this thing such good performance figures. Now the B58 engine, yes, it's faster, as I say. I've spent a bit more time with it now, so I can talk about it in a bit more detail. I think it's, I know it's got a lot more mid-range punch. Now I've never driven a JB4 equipped 3.5 car, but I can imagine that one would feel 
very similar to to the output of this B58 engine. It has plenty more mid, mid range. It feels like a good 15% more punch between say 1800 RPM and about five. It also sounds better between those sort of rev ranges, in my opinion. Slightly better, not much better. But what I have realized and what I have uncovered about this engine is it's not all good. It's not, it's, I mean, the N55 was incredible. So it, it would be hard for anything to sort of beat that in all areas. And I think, I honestly think that actually the N55 lump in our 135s, 235s, is actually better above five grand. Maybe not faster, maybe not more powerful, but it revs out better, it sounds better. And I think because this B58 has so much mid-range punch that anything over five, you find yourself short shifting. So anything over five, it almost feels like a pointless exercise. Now it's not running out of power there. In fact, I think the max power in this car is about six and a half grand. So you do need to rev it all out to, to get that optimized sort of performance figure. But you do find yourself short shifting a bit like you're doing a very powerful diesel, for instance because it's got so much mid-range punch and I bet you there's not much difference in performance with short shifting and revving it all the way out. And also, when you do rev it all the way out, let's just see if we can get this on camera now. I just don't think it sounds that great up there. Certainly not as good. I took my 135 out last night just to compare it like while my ears were fresh with this car and it doesn't, doesn't sound as good up in the rev range. So we're in Sport Plus now. I'll just put it in second so you get some lovely barbels and overrun cracks and exhausts and stuff like you did in the old car but a bit more exaggerating this but it just doesn't have that six and the growl that sort of monstrous growl that the 135 has got at the top end of the rev range how much of that's to do with the orchestrated sound around the cabin i don't know but who cares because above five between five and say seven and this thing revs this thing this thing revs this thing revs to seven two before it hits the limiter now between say five and seven two it's it's a bit of a bland sound to me a better engine overall more efficient more torque certainly a little bit more performance over the 135 unfortunately i didn't get to run it against my 135 or, or an equivalent automatic 235 or whatever but certainly more overall performance that's that's for sure and more usable as well when you just knock it into drive manual uh, sorry drive automatic it just hauls along so easily you know sitting between sort of 1500 and two and a half thousand revs that torque just makes the car relentlessly fast so as an everyday engine, I mean, I can imagine this this unit when it's in say a 340i Touring or something like that, it just, you know, it's, it's perfect for that sort of thing. So it's interesting, so the overall car, like I said, don't run out and, and trade in your 235 for a 240 because I think in the two series variant, there's not much of a difference between the cars except for the slightly improved tech and the slightly improved engine maybe slightly is an understatement on it, I don't know. But with the one series, so the 135 to the 140, there's a bigger jump in my opinion. Again, it's the same engine jump and the same technology jump, so you're getting both of them, but you're also getting, and I don't know if this is factual, but it certainly feels a lot better, the rear end. It feels like it's got a much better rear setup, rear suspension setup. And I've heard on the forums that it's actually got the same rear end as this car now, which would make sense because to me, this car certainly doesn't drive any better than Josh's does. And again, sound wise, the 135 and the 235, they sounded very different when you got from one to the other. Not very different, they sounded different, noticeably different. When you get, you know, when I got in this car for the first time, it also sounded different to Josh's. And I think it's actually a bit more sort of with strained like it's a bit more a bit more mute the sound maybe they've quietened this one a little bit more i don't know maybe i'm imagining that and i haven't done an absolute back-to-back -back. so this is this is all just sort of off memory and i could be talking absolute 
BS. But just remember that, that the, the 140 and the 240 do sound different, just like the 135 and the 235. So if you test driven one of them, don't be surprised when you buy the other and it sounds a bit different. So it's always worth test driving the exact car, although the underpinnings, the engine stuff, effectively is the same, but the exhaust, you know, the exhaust layout's slightly different and there's a few things in it, within each car that is slightly different, so they do have their own little characters. But the, the difference, the gap between the 140 and the 240 now, in my opinion, is bugger all. And, you know, if, if, you, if you don't mind the looks of the 1 Series, buy the 140, because that makes much more sense to me. It's more practical, it's, I think it's cooler, because it's, and it's, it's more understated. And I think it also wears the, the OEM, or the standard 18 inch wheels a lot better. They, they just don't look as small as they do in this car. And it's the first time I've had a two series for more than sort of a few hours. And every time I look at this car, I do think that the standard wheels on it look far too small. The rear ones, the front ones fit everything very well proportionally, but the rear wheels just don't fill those arches enough. And I'm not even like a, you know, I'm not a rude boy. I'm not like, I don't care too much about cosmetic things in my car, but especially when you look at this next to say the M2, the wheels look very small you know it looks more like a 118d than 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 you know than what it is so yeah as brilliant as this car is i personally would go 140 any day of the week but don't get put off by you know there's there's, there's no faults they've they've improved a 235 which was very hard to do in my opinion because i think the 235 was about as perfect a sort of 30 grand coupe as you could buy or 35 grand this now is even better which let's face it is is impressive and, and very well very well done BMW keep impressing and bringing out stuff that's just you know that's better and better do a little hard launch out of here let's give it some I mean it's it's effortless it's so effortless it really is, but there's not much drama there, top end. See, nothing there. Oh, it's so fast. You, you have got to watch the speed. It really masks, it does mask its speed massively, this car, like crazily. And I think that's again to do with the fact that it's got such a strong mid-range sort of torquey punch. You don't realise that that's dealing with so much speed and and sort of progressing you so quickly that by the time you get in the high rev ranges, you're, the, the speed's already been dealt with, you're already going, you're already flying. But yeah, great car. Really, really good car. Amazing value for, well, I think this one, an auto one, what are they, about 37, but then you throw it in discounts, you probably pick one up for just over 30. Right, guys. Thanks for watching as always. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Spread the word, whatever you like. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. And always leave comments in the section below. Thanks again, it's been uh, great. And you guys are the reason that I'm allowed to sort of drive cars like this and do things like this. Right, <laughs> that's the 240, over and out. Cheers guys, thanks a lot, bye.
straight to Ventador has just come down the inside of me and let me guess he's going to go straight he's in the left hand only lane but of course he'll go straight because he's in an Aventador and that's what those for people and he did yes what a penis they say BMW drivers are bad bloody hell um, anyway so but number two the understated BMW M240i 